Hey everybody, I'm Scott Weichel. You are listening to MKOCRadio.com, Canadian Country Gold with Jeff Funk. Jeff will be back in just a little bit with some more great music for you. But right now I've got a very special guest here with us tonight. She is a 2018 inductee into the North American Country Music Association's International Hall of Fame. And she is a fantastic songwriter, originally from Canada, now makes her home in Nashville, Tennessee. It's a pleasure to welcome Riley Madison. Riley, how are you tonight? I'm doing great, Scott. How are you doing? Fantastic. Thanks for taking time, and congratulations on this very well-deserved award. Wow. I think somebody needs to pinch me, though. I feel like I'm living in a dream. (laughs) (laughs) Such a a huge honor. I'm just flabbergasted, really. Well, it's certainly a well-deserved one. You have uh, written some fantastic songs for many, many artists, over 1,200 songs. That is an amazing catalog. Yeah, it, I kind of shake my head when I when I stop to think about it, and you know, writing on a regular basis too. But they're, they're just our little babies. We put them out in the world, and and uh, it's fun to see where they end up. So, did you did you know that you were going to be a songwriter? Is this something you've always wanted to do, or did it kind of come by kind of by a surprise? Well, let me tell you a little story about the very first song I wrote. <laughs> I was all of 14 years old, and I remember writing a song um, about homework. And I sang it for this gentleman who I babysat for when he was driving me to his place to take care of his kids. And uh, I remember very clearly he said, so, yeah, you might want to think about a different kind of career. (laughs) (laughs) I was off to a bad start, but uh, it couldn't keep me down. I, I started writing probably... Probably a bit of a late bloomer after that as far as as the songwriting itself goes. But once Mm -hmm. I got into it, I couldn't stop, and I haven't been able to stop since. Well, that's great. Well, you're from uh, originally from Halifax, Nova Scotia, right? You betcha. Born and raised, lived there for the first 37 years of my life on this planet. Uh, Well, almost 38, actually. Wow. Well, that's, uh, that's Hank Snow country up there, right? <laughs> it is Hank Snow. In fact, uh, Hank Snow, a uh, little, little story for you. My grandfather grew up in an area called Blue Rocks, Nova Scotia, right on the ocean, a uh, family of fishermen, and he had 14 children in his family. And Hank Snow lived in a nearby town, and he used to come twice a week to my grandfather's uh, little home, and he would sing for his dinner, and my great-grandmother would cook him dinner a couple times a week. Is that <laughs> right? Is that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? That is and, pretty cool. And Hank's sister married my grandfather's brother for about a minute and a half. <laughs> <laughs> it's a small world out there in Nova Scotia, but I, I certainly love the roots and where I've come from. It's a beautiful province. Have you ever been? I have not. I know it's a beautiful country. I'm in Michigan. I'm I'm uh, not too far away, I guess. But <laughs> no, you're not too far at all. Maybe sometime you'll make the journey, and I'll be your personal tour guide. Oh, that would be great! Absolutely. Well, when did you move to Nashville, and what prompted the move there? Well, I started traveling to Nashville in 2000 um, after my very first showcase during Canadian Country Music Week. I did the songwriter series, and a publishing company approached me afterwards and invited me to come to Nashville. So I did. And I just came down for a little trip, fell in love with Nashville, and from the beginning of 2000 and on, I started coming three and four times a year. I'd spend anywhere from three weeks to a month here, and then go back home, and then come back down. And um, fast forward many years later, I was playing a festival over in France, and uh, met um, the fellow that I'm now married to, who's a bass player here in Nashville. So Uh (laughs) everything kind of came full circle, but... The crazy thing about all of that was that um, I grew up as an Anne Murray fan. I adored Anne Murray, wanted to be the next Anne Murray growing up. And my guidance counselor in grade 11 told me, he said, well, there's no way you can go to school to become the next Anne Murray, so you really need to pick a different career. (laughs) And somebody influential telling me I can't be in music. (laughs) So I... I chose, I chose to go into the world of drafting and design in the uh, world of building houses and commercial buildings. And two years later, I was in a, a head-on collision that put me in five years of rehab for learning to, you know, all that craziness, walk, see, all that stuff. Oh, wow. Again. And in that time, I started singing at a little karaoke club in Halifax. And uh, the local radio station literally plucked me out of the waters and 
shook me off and kind of started encouraging me. And it was uh, a gentleman by the name of Paul Kennedy <clears throat> who really blazed a trail for me all the way to Canadian Country Music Week and then on to Nashville. And, and uh, that publishing company in the audience at my first showcase during Canadian Country Music Week was wow. Belmer Publishing, which was Anne Murray's company. Oh, wow. So it's pretty cool. <laughs> Absolutely. And then That's my... A- yeah, and then my very first East Coast Music nomination was alongside Anne Murray for Country Artist wow. of the Year. So it was, it's kind of cool. This little, this young little girl with a dream got to grow up and and live a dream, and I'm still living it. It's very, very much a dream. <laughs> okay, so the question back is: Did you ever go back to your guidance counselor and say, "Ha, look at me now"? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could find him. I wish I could have blocked his name out. <laughs> it was too traumatizing. But I did run into uh, my grade 9 teacher back in the day who from grade 7 to 9 I was in the talent shows and the school pageants. And she, I remember her being an influence and a very much an encourager. And I ran into her just a few years ago. She had moved out of Halifax and down into Cape Breton. Hadn't seen her since my school years, really. Ran into her, and she was over the moon, so excited that I was pursuing music. And I remember back then, she said, now, you'll remember me, dear, right? When, you, when, you're, when you're like Anne Marie, like you want to be. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, though I may not have reached Anne Marie's acclaim, uh, it's her, she was my biggest cheerleader, and I sent her my entire catalog of music, and she was just so sweet. It's so fun to kind of have that go full circle. Oh, that's great. That's fantastic. <laughs> well, you certainly uh, you certainly topped Anne Murray in songs. Uh, that's for darn sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe as a writer, yeah. <laughs> definitely. Maybe as a writer. <clears throat> definitely. And you've done a lot of touring, of course, in Canada. And you mentioned you've been in France, and uh, you've been in Ireland, and you've toured with Terry Clark. Yep. I did. I got to do, I got to do the Terry tour um, last year from coast to coast in Canada, but not as not so much as uh, the singer songwriter artist Riley Madison. But I was her official MC and uh, her the host of her Q and A series of the concert uh, every night. But it was such a blast. And um, my husband is actually Terry's bass player. Oh, is that right? And the funny thing is when he. He went off to audition for her after a couple of years of marriage for us, and I had known Terry since I began. Like I met her at my very first Canadian Country Music Week, and uh, the night before he went to audition for her, I was at a party that she was at, and I didn't say a word about who was auditioning for her the next day. I wanted him to kind of just stand on his own two feet and not, you know, not not look for any kind of favor. But he ended up at the gig, and he's been with her now for eight years, and and. Uh, we had a great time getting to tour coast to coast last year. Oh, that's fantastic. And you certainly won a lot of awards for your songwriting and your uh, performing as well. This is your second award for the NACMA. You won the uh, 2016 Song and Songwriter of the Year as well from them, so that's fantastic. And yeah, these... it's great. It's, a, it's such an honor, such and... an honor to be recognized on such a platform. And this year you'll be in the Hall of Fame, and you're going to be performing alongside uh, Jeannie Kendall, Rex Allen Jr., Dick Dameron, Joyce Smith. It's going to be a fantastic show. It's crazy. It's crazy when you say it, when you repeat it back. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, I'm, I seriously think I'm living in a dream state or something, so it's, it's pretty awesome. I'm just humbled and honored. Well, it's going to be a great show, and, and we were there last year, and it's a, it's a beautiful theater. It's the Country Tonight Theater in Pigeon Forge, and that'll be Saturday, March the 17th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at the Country Tonight Theater, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. You can get tickets at countrytonightpf.com. We will put that information on our Facebook page. We also have a uh, page for NACMA on our website with all the information there as well as NACMA's website. So uh, we want folks to come down and catch this fabulous show. All the... Uh, all the performers, you'll get to see them perform and win their awards. So, Riley, have you got some songs picked out for the show? I think I think I might even try a new one out. How oh, does that cool. sound? <laughs> that sounds really cool. Can you tell me what it is? <laughs> well, you know what? My, my dad passed away uh, just over three years ago, and a few of the few treasured items I have that belong to him were his record collection. So it's, it's a song that I wrote called Lost in a Song. And it's all about sitting and spinning his old vinyl records. Oh wow! I can't wait to hear that. Yeah. That sounds uh, that sounds like me. 
I bet. I'm, I'm sure you've spun more than a few. Yes, it's very easy to get lost in the vinyl, that's for sure. I, uh, You know, after I got it, I been doing this radio show now for almost four years and before that i had gotten rid of most of my collection because i quite frankly got tired of moving it around and of course now that i'm doing the show here i am collecting records again so <laughs> oh, and you're probably kicking yourself for releasing yes. some of that yes i am that is world. for sure <laughs> well, i've been picking it up myself at yard sales and estate sales <clears throat> here and there and finding little treasures and brought home a little uh, a big old record player from an estate sale here in nashville Spent a bit, spent forty dollars on it, All right. <laughs> and I've been collecting up vinyl records since, and having a great time. There's nothing like it. Putting that needle on the vinyl, it's just awesome. Absolutely, you know, I, there's some great record shops in Nashville too. We were in one last time we were down there, and spent I spent probably three hours in there just go digging through stuff. And there's some oh, yeah. good places down there. <laughs> <laughs> there are, and estate sales in this town are unbelievable for vinyl treasures. Oh, I imagine stuff yeah. that people have just collected and it sat on their shelves for years, and it's mint. So a lot of it's still with the plastic on it. Oh, Amazing cool. what you can find here. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, tell me some uh, some of the uh, performers. I know Ben Click has recorded some of your music. Uh, tell me some of the other performers that have recorded your songs. And also, what is it like when you when you hear someone else uh, record one of your songs? And is, have you ever been kind of surprised at their interpretation of them? Uh, well, absolutely. For one, it's always an honor uh, to have a song picked and pulled out of a needle in a haystack, basically, because a lot of a lot of artists these days that are writing for albums, I know in my case, I would sift through about 100 to 120 every time I recorded an album of material I had written or co-written. <clears throat> and that's the case for a lot of records these days. They just sift through and go through so much songs in the process of finding the ones they want to record. So when something gets picked that I've had the pleasure of writing or co-writing, it's it's quite an honor. It's, it's very... Uh, very humbling at the same time that that it's that it made it to the top of the stack so artists like of course the latest uh with ben quick and stephanie rose and i've had hits with diane chase who's out of ontario i've had john langer record my material i've mm -hmm. it on the east coast aslan debson and dave carmichael and charlie a court and these genres are all a widespread of genre they're not just country they're more on that i do a lot of story songs but there's uh, right now Ashley Condon out of Prince Edward Island. She's more on the folk side of things. And she's recorded a song that she and I wrote a few years back. And then a brand new artist named Michaela Lynn out of the East Coast. I shouldn't say brand new, but she's really starting to make some inroads at the age of 16. And I've got a couple cuts on her new record that just came out. And, and so it's, it's, it's really exciting to, to keep getting cuts along the way and cuts and bruises as we like to call them here <laughs> yeah in nashville sometimes they're cuts and sometimes they're big old bruises but <laughs> i do we, we keep uh i know for me i keep hunting and farming for that next for that next cut and that next hit and of course in nashville everybody wants that big yeah. that big cut that's yeah, going to so make or break you know or take them to the next level so i'm always on the watch for that that's really cool. You've got some great albums out, too. You've got a Live in Nashville album that you've done that's uh, absolutely stellar. You, you recorded that uh, just kind of an intimate setting. It's it's a wonderful album. Thank you. Thank you. I did that, uh, if you can believe it. I've got something called A She Shed. Have you heard of A She Shed? Uh, does does uh, she sell <laughs> seashells by the seashore? <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Well, you've heard of The Man Cave, yes. correct? Yes, yes. Well, the she shed is basically the shed in the backyard, and the women are taking over the shed. Okay, all right. And creating their own little sanctuary, and some women have their craft rooms out there, or their reading rooms, or their wine collection. And my shed in the backyard, I converted it to my little writing cabin. And nice. it's a little 10 by 16 cabin with a little loft, and uh, mm. got a fireplace, and hardwood floors, and and air conditioning and heat the whole bit and uh i had a wild hair idea to do a live record out there in the in the shack in the back we call it and that's what we did we even recorded a little web series for a season and then i invited some friends like terry clark and michelle wright and and we had a good old time out there in the shed making music but yeah live in nashville was done right here live in nashville in the shed the she shed the she shed <laughs> By the seashore. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite by the seashore. Not quite by the seashore. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. But That's we sure true. had a good time. 
Oh, that's cool. And uh, Riley's mu uh, music is available at her website. It's RileyMadison.com. And you, yes, she, yes. you, of course, can get that album as well as her other great albums, Where Does the Time Go, Me and Cinderella, a great Christmas album, and your your debut back in 2002, The Life of Riley. What a great title. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, we are sure looking forward to seeing you at the NACMA show, and congratulations again. And uh, we certainly uh, invite all of our listeners to come down and check out this wonderful show. Saturday, March 17th, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at the Country Tonight Theater in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. Riley Madison, thanks so much for being on Canadian Country Gold, and I know Jeff's going to play a bunch of your songs right now for us. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Scott. I appreciate it. All right. I'm Scott Weichel, MKOCRadio.com. We're going to get back to Jeff Funk and Canadian Country Gold. <laughs> 